Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to another video of ELE424 Analog Electronics 1. Right, so um, we've covered fixed bias and we have covered emitter stabilized bias. We are now ready to cover the next topic, uh, voltage divider bias, uh, uh, which is perhaps the more um, commonly used among the three uh, because of the stability um, features that it can offer. I am one Fazli Dahanim Abdullah. I'm from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, UITM, Shah Alam. So this lecture will be referring to the previous uh, video lectures, DC bias, fixed bias, and DC emitter bias. And I'll be referring it uh, to those uh, slides quite a lot. Uh, so please study those topics first. Topics covered in BJT DC biasing as a whole. Um, we've done um, introduction, why DC biasing is required. We've done fixed bias, emitter stabilized bias. We are now at voltage divider bias. Um, after this lecture, we'll be covering collector feedback, a meter follower, and the common base. So again, uh, as I, I said in the previous slide as well, the previous video as well, that the lecture will present and analyze a circuit for each of the category, perhaps the simplest, as an example um, for each of the biasing circuit. And all of the biasing circuit, even though the arch architectures may differ um, uh, one from the other, uh, the approach is still the same. We'll consider the input loop and then the output loop and it would usually involve KVL, Ohm's law, voltage divider rule and perhaps if at most a Thevenin equivalent circuit. Voltage divider bias. Okay, the circuit. Beta is, a te is temperature sensitive. We know that and we need a bias circuit that is less dependent on beta and that is what we have uh, done for the previous um, configuration which is the emitter stabilized bias but uh, a voltage divider bias configuration attempts further to set Q point independent of the term beta. Okay, so this is how the circuit looks like. R1 and R2 um, connected between VCC and the base terminal and from the base terminal to the ground. RE still exists here just like the emitter stabilized bias and there is RC uh, being collector terminal and VCC. Voltage divider bias configuration adds R2 from base to ground compared to the previous circuit which is the emitter bias. If the circuit parameters are properly chosen, ICQ and VCEQ can almost be totally independent uh, of beta. So the strategy of this voltage divider by a circuit, which we will revisit this strategy again at the end of this um, uh, video, the level of IBQ will change with the change in beta. But the Q point defined by ICQ and VCQ can remain fixed if the proper circuit parameters are employed. Okay, So when there are beta changes, it will also result in um, IB changes which means if beta changes due to temperature, it will not affect IC so much because it would be uh, recompensated by the changes in IB. Analysis of the DC equivalent circuit from the last slide. The DC equivalent circuit is drawn with the capacitors replaced with an open circuit, just like the previous um, DC biasing circuit. Okay. And the approach taken in the next few steps are just the same as in the fixed bias circuit. The input loop is analyzed for expression relating to the input current IB, this side, this, this um, side here. And the output loop is analyzed for IC and VCE, which is uh, involving RC, VCE, RE, and VCC. So two methods, now the thing that is slightly different here is that there are two methods to analyze the input loop. One is by using exact method, another is to use an approximate method. In the exact method, um, it is applicable to any voltage divider configuration without having any restrictions on applications. But it involves finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the input loop. Because now your input loop will have an additional R2 to R1 and RE. And to make things easier, you will have to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit if it's done under exact method. Under the approximate method, Okay, the analysis is simpler, but you, we can apply this only if specific conditions are spe satisfied. And usually in many cases, they are satisfied. So it's always good to check because uh, if this specific condi conditions are satisfied, uh, the analysis would be much simpler uh, to handle for the input loop. So first, we will look at exact method. We will do it. And then once we have done... Um, 
uh, the example for the exact method, we will go on to the approximate method. We'll need to cover both uh, for the syllabus. Exact method. Analysis of the input loop is done involving finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit of the base emitter loop. Okay, this method, I am repeating myself, can be applied to any voltage divider bias configuration. Okay, so when the screen turns yellow like this, I'm, it means, just as in the previous videos as well, it means that I'm taking off slightly from the main topic. I'm just to do a quick revision so that the uh, following slides can be understood easier. So this is a revision of Thevenin equivalent circuit taken from electric circuits, which you probably have done when you did um, circuit analysis ELE411 or any earlier courses that is relevant to what you've gone through that covers uh, Thevenin equivalent circuit. So any linear electrical network containing only voltage sources, current sources and resistances, whether dependent and independent, can be replaced at the terminals A and B by an equivalent combination of just a voltage source and a resistance resistor. So it will be V seven in and R seven in. Now I uh, in this slide I have included Thev T H E V instead of just T H so that you don't confuse it with the threshold voltage. Okay, so um, this is an example of a resistive network containing independent and dependent sources, which has 25 volts, 3 amps, and 3 of these resistors is 5 ohms, 20 ohms, and 4, 4 ohms. And you can actually reduce this. You can actually find the value of V7N and R7N. So for this specific example here, it can be represented by a 32 volts uh, voltage source in series with an 8 ohm resistor. So to calculate V7N, the technique is V7N is found from open circuit voltage between terminals A and B. So whatever um, network that you are given, you can find the open circuit voltage here either using um, voltage divider rule or um, any of the uh, um, voltage uh, laws that you have, current laws that you have studied. Okay, find the V uh, open circuit, that would be your V7N. To calculate R7N, um, if uh, if your network has independent sources only, which is going to be the case for our BJT here, uh, we can find R equivalent by deactivating independent sources and looking into the network at the designated terminal pair. Okay, meaning that a voltage source, you can replace it with a short circuit and a current source is uh, deactivated by replacing it with an open circuit. So you can already imagine in our input loop, we have VCC. Now when we find the R7 in, R equivalent, we replace it with a, a short circuit like this. So if I were to find R equivalent of 8 ohms here, uh, 8 ohms here, we replace 25 volts with a short circuit and the 3 amp current source by an open circuit and find what the R equivalent is to this network. Okay, now let's do... Um, the analysis of the input loop. Again, don't be frightened by the um, exact method which has tabular and equivalent circuit. The um, structure is still the same. We will analyze the input loop and then we will analyze the output loop. Okay, so for an analysis of input loop, before I actually do the written um, uh, analysis of it, let's just have a visualization of this. So the input loop will cover R1, R2, RE and VBE like this. Okay, but we want to uh, replace this between the base terminal and ground. We want to replace this uh, network here, which is highlighted in the blue box, with the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Okay, so R Thevenin is going to be replaced. Um, VCC will be replaced with a short circuit. So R Thevenin is the equivalent circuit of um, R1 and R2, which will be in parallel. Okay, because both their terminals, end of the terminals will be connected to ground and the other terminals are connected to each other. And the V7N circuit is going to be open circuit voltage, which is going to be the voltage drop across resistance R2 um, and R1 here. Okay, so this would be by voltage divider rule. And from there, we can uh, redraw this input loop with E7N and R7N. Um, and then we can have the KVL across the input loop, which includes uh, VBE and uh, IERE as well. So let's do this. Okay, we have an input loop. Redraw it. We want to find the R seven in. Okay, so using parallel resistors, you can find the equivalence of um, the R equivalent of R one and R two. And then you can find E seven in. 
okay, which is the open circuit voltage as I mentioned earlier using voltage divider rule and then we can do a Thevenin uh, the we can redraw the Thevenin equivalent circuit together with VPE and RE and do an input uh, loop KVL which is what we've been doing before so it's just adding this slightly extra steps here for the Thevenin equivalent circuit we do the KVL and we get this expression um, negative E Thevenin plus IBR Thevenin plus VPE plus IERE equals to zero and we get an expression here for IB um, which is uh, IB equals to E seven n minus VBE, just like um, the situation before, except that now it's E seven n instead of just VCC, and the denominator is going to be R seven n plus beta plus one RE. So um, our saturation and load line analysis, because the output loop is the same behavior as the emitter bias. Okay, we've only added R2 and R2 is in the input loop. Okay, the output loop is still the same. So the load line analysis and the saturation levels will also be the same. The only thing that differs in voltage divider bias compared to the emitter bias configuration that we covered last lecture is that the input loop have a different equation for level of IB. Okay, so it's going to look the same. I have the load line analysis. I superimpose it onto the output characteristics of IC versus VCE. We have the same um, um, expressions for the load line. So for the load line, uh, from the output um, uh, loop KVL, we can rewrite. Uh, I'm just repeating it here to find the Y intercept and X intercept, which is going to be VCC over RC plus RE and VCC. And for saturation value, we can estimate VCE set as approximately equal to zero, just like in our previous cases as well. And this provides the expression for IC set that is to be avoided. Okay, this is value is to be avoided when we design it, which is going to be um, the voltage drop across VCC for saturation value uh, of which we estimate VCE to be equals to zero volts will just be uh, ICRC and IERE. But IE is going to be the same as IC, and IC and IE are all IC set. Okay, so we have this ex that expression for uh, IC set, which is going to be equal to VCC over RC plus RE. Uh, refer to the previous emitter bias configuration section uh, and the fixed bias configuration section on saturation and load line for more information if this slide is a little bit too fast for you. Okay, let's do an example. For the exact method, the example, let's do this circuit here. Okay, we have uh, RB, which consists of R1 and R2, which is 39 kilo ohms and 3.9 kilo ohms. We have a collector resistance of 10 kilo ohm and a meter resistance of 1.5 kilo ohms with VCC of 22 volts. The uh, beta for our BJT is given to be 100. So we want to find the DC bias voltage operating point VCE and the current IC um, for the voltage divider configuration. So how do we do it? Okay, I'm just redrawing it here. We, it's not, again, it's not that complicated. It's not difficult. It's just analysis of input loop and just analysis of output loop, except that in this case, because it's an exact method approach, we need to find the uh, Thevenin an equivalent circuit. So just you have a visualization. I'm going to cover this part by part so that it becomes clearer. So we have input loop analysis, which first, which is first um, finding the Thevenin equivalent circuit and doing the KVL, and then we have the output loop KVL. That's it. So let's do the um, solution here. So the first part is going to be DC equivalent circuit of the voltage divider bias to analyze the input loop. Okay, we need we want to replace the input loop with the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Okay, which consists of E Thevenin and R Thevenin. To find R Thevenin, because um, uh, VCC is our only independent source, we can replace it with a short circuit because that's what Thevenin equivalent circuit um, technique is. Okay, so you have R Thevenin, which is R one parallel with R two, and based on the values that is given of three. 39 kilo ohm and 3.9 kilo ohm, we get the parallel resistors to be equal to 3.55 kilo ohm. And then to find E Thevenin, we do a voltage divider rule uh, across um, R2 because um, V Thevenin, uh, E Thevenin is actually the open circuit voltage across those ter terminals. 
and uh, doing the voltage divider rule gives us E7 to be equals to 2 volts. And when we do, um, uh, when we have the 7 and equivalent circuit, we are now ready to do the input loop analysis using the 7 and equivalent circuit replaced with 2 volts and 3.55 kilo ohms. When we do a KVL around this loop, it's just going to be negative E7 and plus uh, IBR R7 and okay, plus VBE plus IERE. Okay, so IB is taken to be the current across uh, going uh, through R7N and the current through RE is going to be IE. But IE we know based on IE is equals to IB plus IC and the fact that IC is beta IB, IE is equals to beta plus 1 IB. Okay. So um, when we uh, replace that into the expression of the KVL, we get expression for IB uh, replaced with the value of E7N VBE R7 and beta and RE, we get the value 8.38 microamps. So using, now that uh, we know what the value of IB is, using the common emitter transistor characteristics, which says IC is equals to beta IB, okay, we have this expression IC which is equals to 0 0.84 milliamps. And when we do the output loop, okay, we get um, RE, RC, and VCC, just like the emitter bias. Okay, But w whether we remember it or not, we just redraw the output loop and then do a KVL around it. We get VCC minus IERE minus VCE minus ICRC equals to zero. Our approximation is that IE is approximately equal to IC. Okay. And uh, rearranging this expression, we have VCE at 12.34 volts. Have a go at it uh, before uh, we do the further example. Okay. Um, all right. Now, let's do another example. It's the same circuit, but the purpose of this circuit is just to show the effect of change in beta. What if beta changes from 100 to 50? And let's say this uh, change is because of temperature. Yeah, but we want to investigate how the um, uh, voltage divider bias perform in terms of the uh, Q point uh, variation because of this uh, change of beta. So if we do, I'm not going to do the solution here again, okay? but uh, you can just do this yourself. So if you get uh, beta at 50, what you're going to get is that you have the same R7 and E7N because it's the same R1 and R2 and the same VCC. ICQ is going to be 0 0.81 milliamp with beta 50 instead of 100 and VCEQ is going to be 12.69 volts um, instead of uh, the previous slide which was 12.34 okay so this is 12.69 volts so with voltage divider bias these are the changes beta changes from 100 to 50 okay and ICQ changes from 0 0.84 to 0 0.81 and VCEQ changes from 12.34 to 12.69 volts. So now let's compare effect of uh, change in beta to the three um, DC bias circuit configuration that we have covered. Fixed bias, emitter bias and voltage divider bias. Now for the fixed bias, when you change uh, beta from 50 to 100, which means that you double it, now, Okay. you change it by 100%, ICQ will also change by 100%, almost 100%. Okay. So IB is uh, remains the same at 47 microamps um, and IC changes from 2.35 to 4.71 milliamps. Of course, these values are going to be different for different circuits, but these values that I have put into this table here uh, is based on the examples that we have covered in the videos. Okay, so VCE uh, also drops by 76%, but in the emitter bias, when you change beta from 50 to 100, okay, ICQ changes um, by 81%. So that's going to be less than 100% compared to the fixed bias. VCEQ drops not by 76%, but it drops by 35%. Okay, can we improve this further? Yes, we can. If we do the voltage divider bias, when beta doubles, ICQ changes from 0.81 to 0.84%, which is about 3.7%. 3% okay and VCEQ drops only almost 3% as well so this is um, 
uh, excellent uh, effect of uh, keeping the uh, Q point uh, stable against the changes of beta. So we are still in the voltage divided by circuit topic, still the same bias topic except that we have completed the exact method that involves finding seven and equivalent circuit for the input loop. We will now look into an alternative approach to analyze the input loop, which is using the proximate method in this voltage divider bias configuration topic. Okay, it's the same bias circuit. Uh, it will be the same uh, treatment of uh, change in beta. Okay, the improvement that it comes because it's the same circuit altogether. It's just a different kind of um, analysis approach to make it easier for us to handle uh, analysis uh, for intuition approach. You know, sometimes you just want to have a quick look at it and have a feel of how the bias circuit is uh, using approximate method. Okay, approximate method. Still the same voltage divider bias circuit. Analysis of the input loop is now done assuming that R1 and R2 can be treated as in series. Hence, VB can be set using voltage divider rule. Okay, now first question is, is R1 and R2 in series? The answer is no, because you have R1 connected to R2 at this um, connection, at this node, but the base terminal is also connected to this uh, node. So by right, R1 and R2 is not in series. But what approximate method is saying is that if certain conditions exist, you can assume that even though it is not in series, you can treat it as though that it is in series. Okay. So, when it is in series, if R1 and R2 is in series, then you can set VB okay using voltage divider rule because you know that the total voltage across r1 and r2 is going to be vr1 um, and vr2 so it's going to be r2 over r1 plus r2 times vcc you can find vb as simple as using voltage divider rule and from there if you know vb because you know vbe which is 0 0.7 volts you can find ve which is equals to ie re and because you know uh, ve equals to ie re you can find ie okay because re would be a known value and VE you can find from VBE equals to VB minus VE. So once you find IE, you can estimate IC because IC is approximately equal to IE. And if you know IC, you can find IB because um, IC is equals to beta IB. So you can find all this only if it uh, satisfies the condition of beta RE. Beta RE here, beta comes from the transistor times RE is greater than 10 times R2. Otherwise, if we use um, this approach, you're not going to get the values to be very accurate uh, and to have better accuracy for the purpose of this course, we will use the exact method to get better accuracy. Okay. But what's the reason behind this assumption? Okay, let's, let's just go on, because we can't go around assuming things are in series, although it is not in series, right? So let's see what, what the logic is behind this. Okay. We need to compare these two, beta RE and 10 times R2. Okay. So the slides have um, changed yellow, <laughs> which means that we just need to do a quick revision. We'll have a look at parallel resistors. If we understand uh, parallel resistors better, it's easier to assume, uh, to understand uh, what the reason behind the assumption is. So let's assume we have uh, two parallel resistors, R1 and R2. The equivalent resistance we know is going to be R1, R2 over R1 plus R2, right? So um, if we have 10 ohms, now let's say the blue resistor is 10 ohms and we change the value of the red resistance. Um, if we have 10 ohms parallel with 5 ohms, we get an R equivalent of 3.3 .3 ohms. If we have 10 ohms parallel with 100 ohms, we get R equivalent to 9.1 ohms. And 10 ohms with 1000 ohms gives you 9.9 .9 ohms. And 10 ohms with 1 mega ohm gives you an equivalent resistance of 9.9999 ohms. So eventually, what it's saying is that the bigger the par parallel resistor, okay, um, the closer the R equivalent resistance is going to be to um, R1. Okay, and you can assume that the bigger parallel resistor can be assumed as open circuit if it becomes too big compared to uh, R1. So what is too big? What is too big? Maybe an acceptable estimate is R2 
being uh, 10 times bigger than R1 because you see when R1 and R2 are in parallel the equivalent resistance will never be bigger than the smallest value of the resistance okay so if you if we take 10 ohms and 100 ohms our equivalent is going to be 9.1 ohms which is going to be close enough to 10 ohms okay so that is um that is why the value 10 is being used in the condition and the fact that if R2 is significantly larger than R1, another way of looking at it is that if R2 is bigger, significantly larger than R1, now the current I total will mostly want to go to R1 instead of R2. Okay? Because it is too big a resistance uh, in the path of R2, most of it will go into R1. And that is the um, uh, logic that we use, that we use behind the assumptions. Okay. So recall that the expression of IB for emitter bias and voltage divider bias configuration is in the form of Ohm's law. And this is like having uh, input resistance uh, seen from the input loop uh, reflected to the input loop uh, by um, beta plus 1 times RE. So the DC biasing circuit um, with RE, if we have an emitter uh, resistance, it will be um, RB plus beta plus 1 RE. Okay. So if beta RE, okay, which is the effective resistance seen from the base terminal to the ground here, is going to be bigger than 10 times R2, the input resistance between the base terminal VB and RE are large enough to assume that at the uh, base terminal, it does not take any current compared to the current that goes through R2. So it's like saying all of the current through R1 goes to R2 and even though we have beta RE um, because this value of resistance at this point here is going to be very big compared to R2 it does not take in any current okay so this one here beta plus 1 RE um, again we approximate because uh, beta is going to be a big value so we can just ignore this uh, plus 1 it becomes negligible compared to the overall value of beta itself so all the current from R1 will go to, or almost all of it will go to R2 and only a very small value goes to uh, the base terminal and um, the resistance beta RE. So you can actually uh, ignore this and this assumption effectively is saying that R1 and R2 are in series because all of current R1 goes to R2 and therefore if this is in series then we can say VB can be found from voltage divider rule of VCC between R1 and R2 okay that's why we can make the assumption even though R1 and R2 are not actually technically in series so repeating analysis of the input loop is done by assuming that R1 and R2 can be treated as in series hence F, uh, VB can be set using voltage divider rule because if we know VB and we know VB is 0 0.7 volts we can find out what V is and if we know what VE is, we know what IE is um, from Ohm's law. And IC is approximately equals to IE. And once we know IC, uh, we can also find out what IB is because IC is equals to beta IB. And this method can only be applied if beta RE is 10 times bigger than R2. That's a safe um, estimate for our purpose here. So let's do an example. Let's use the same example that we had earlier for the uh, exact method. Let's do this with um, approximate method. So this is the solution that we have. Okay, It's uh, slightly shorter than the exact method, but uh, also it is simpler because you're not doing any kind of um, seven in equivalent circuit. You're just only doing voltage divider rule and voltage across a device, knowing what the voltages at the nodes are and Ohm's law. Okay. Except that the fact there first is that we need to check and then do the voltage divider rule then the Ohm's law. So checking. Um, for what do we want to check? We want to check if beta RE is bigger than 10 times R2. So beta RE is a 150 times 10 to the power of 3 and 10 R2 is 39 times 10 to the power of T, uh, R3. So the condition beta RE uh, greater than 10 uh, R2 is satisfied which means that yes we can use approximate method. So do the DC equivalent circuit, find the voltage divider rule because uh, VB is just going to be the voltage drop across R2 um, uh, 
from R1 across the total voltage drop of VCC. So we get VB equals to 2 volts. And then because we know VBE is 0 0.7 volts, VE is going to be 1.3 volts. And because we know VE is equals to 1.3 volts, we can do Ohm's law across RE, which is VE is equals to IE RE. And we find that IE is 0 0.867 milliamps. But because IE is approximately equals to IC, IC is also 0 0.867 milliamps. And from there, we can find um, VCE because the total voltage drop from VCC to ground here across RC, VCE, and RE okay, is going to be equal to 22 volts. So VCE uh, for our Q point here, um, I should be consistent here, right? This IC should be Q, but okay, this is ICQ and VCEQ is 22 minus uh, 0 0.867 uh, times 10 kilo ohm, which is the voltage drop across RC, uh, minus um, uh, VE, okay, which is uh, 1.3 volts. So you can find VCEQ, which is 12.03 volts. And that is um, about the same compared to what we had. Uh, earlier okay but what happens if the condition beta re greater or equal to 10 r2 is not met but we still do the approximate analysis approach okay let's do an example let's take an example where the condition is not met so this is just to demonstrate what it looks like we can do this um, solution here where um, now we have 10 r2 to be um, sorry r2 to be 22 kilo ohms and beta re which is 50 times 1.2 kilo ohm is going to be um not going to be 10 times r2 so this is like going to be just about three times larger than uh, beta r uh, three times larger than r2 so i let's do an exact method for this uh, uh, circuit so exact method gives e thevenin 3.81 volts and r thevenin 7.35 kilo ohms and resulting in icq of 1.98 and 4.54 but if we do the proximate analysis okay we get icq to be 2.59 milliamps and vceq to be 3.88 volts and if we compare this um two values because beta re is not bigger than 10 times r2 instead it's just about three times r2 we have about 10 percent difference for vceq and we have about 30 percent difference of icq again even with this difference the values are well fairly about the same but um again it's not uh, it may cause some um uh, concern there because um the the difference can be quite significant so for our purpose let's stick to the condition beta re must be greater than 10 r2 for us to do an approximate method for this course okay summarizing advantages of voltage divider biasing let's compare again okay this this uh, diagram here i took it off the uh, reference neiman okay uh, we have here a fixed bias configuration. This is how it looks like the Q point when beta changes. Okay, when beta changes, uh, this is the shift that happens. Okay, but when uh, we have voltage divided bias configuration, even though when beta changes, um, the shift uh, is not that great because when beta changes, IB also changes. So the voltage divider circuit of R1 and R2 can bias the transistor in its active region okay, using the resistor values in the low kilo ohm range. Now, in contrast, if you have fixed bias, uh, you have only a single resistor biasing okay, and you require uh, a big uh, uh, value for the resistance there. And uh, the change in ICQ and VCQ with a change in beta is substantially reduced. Okay, maybe about just 3% change, even though beta changes uh, significantly by 100%. And this is how it is done. When you have an emitter resistor RE, it tends to stabilize the Q point. Okay, RE introduces negative feedback. You will be seeing negative feedback in further courses of electronics or control systems or whatever it is. But negative feedback uh, tends to stabilize circuits and you will see this uh, later. Okay, we are now ready to go on to the next um, slide, which is the collector feedback bias. This is the end of video 4. Thank you.